In recent years, a monoclonal antibody called daratumumab has emerged as a new treatment option for relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma. Daratumumab is directed against the antigen CD38, which is highly expressed in myeloma cells. However, CD38 is also weakly expressed in red blood cells. That is why the presence of daratumumab in the patient's serum has a major influence on pretransfusion testing. It interferes with reagent and donor blood cells used in antibody screening as well as in cross-matching and also may affect the results of a direct antiglobulin test. What we see in all three of these tests in the presence of daratumumab is agglutination, even when it shouldn't be there. We call this panagglutination. So basically, we see false positive results. Two major problems arise from disinterference. One is that panagglutination can mask the presence of clinically relevant alloantibodies, which in turn might induce serious transfusion reactions. The other problem is that procedures to eliminate these interferences lead to delays in issuing RBC units, which might also harm the patient. So what can we do about it? How can you help improve the situation? First of all, communication between the clinicians and the transfusion lab staff is essential. Current recommendations advise performing an array of tests on the myeloma patient's blood samples before their tumumab therapy is started. These tests include blood typing with an extended RBC phenotype or genotype, antibody screen, and direct antiglobulin test. The patient should also be provided with an alert card that states that he or she is a dertumumab patient. This card should be presented to every healthcare provider prior to any treatment. What happens if the patient needs a blood transfusion during therapy? In this case, the lab must be informed about the administration of daratumumab first before the transfusion. Before performing any lab tests, the lab staff will then treat both the test and donor cells with a special chemical called DTT, which destroys CD38 on the cells. This should eliminate any interferences made by daratumumab. However, this is a time-consuming and quite labor-intensive procedure so it's best to plan a patient's transfusion as early as possible to avoid any delays. If cell treatment with DTT does not work, you still have a positive cross-match, but your patient urgently needs blood, you can alternatively order blood units that are matched not only according to the ABO and rhesus blood group, but also other blood groups. That way, there is a better chance that you will avoid immunization. However, this level of matching takes time, depends on the availability of specifically matched blood products and is more expensive. What happens after their tumumab therapy is discontinued? Since panagglutination can occur for up to six months after discontinuation of their tumumab therapy, it is important to inform the lab staff that the patient had been previously treated with their tumumab in this time period. A number of promising alternative options for preventing the effects of their tumumab on agglutination, which are simpler and faster than DTT treatment are currently in the works, but none of these are yet available for clinical use. Daratumumab is a promising new agent in the fight against myeloma. However, the downside is its interference with important pre-transfusion tests. So don't forget to plan ahead and communicate with your transfusion lab. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.